This is not an easy video for me to make. Not too long ago, the S9 was my only robot vacuum. I loved it. I thought it was the greatest thing ever. It motivated me to buy more of them to start this channel. So it's with kind of a heavy heart that I have to make this video. From the very beginning, I was concerned with um, the firm contact that the brushes or extractor bars made with the floor, but I figured iRobot knew what they were doing. But then after a while, I started noticing these very fine, um, very regular scratches on my floors in places that people or dogs didn't go. Even more obvious was this ramp that I painted uh, and installed specifically for this robot. As you can see, um, the brushes are basically removing the paint, and this is after maybe a week. Um, so needless to say, that had me very concerned. I decided that I had to find out for sure if the robot was in fact scratching the floor and whether this was normal for all vacuum robots or just the particular characteristic of the S9. So I got some plexiglass and I ran various robots over it to see what would happen. The reason I wanted to use plexiglass is because it's a little softer than uh, most floor finishes, though perhaps not polyurethane, and I can see the results of running a robot over it without having to do it for hours and hours because we're concerned here with cumulative results. Um, these robots aren't going to scratch your floor, you know, in the first hour of running them. They're going to scratch it over days, weeks, perhaps months. Um, and the important thing here is to note the relative uh, effect that these things have on the plexiglass. Because everything you do to your floors, even walking on them, scratches them, what you want to see is if something scratches it more than it should. That's the issue. So I started with the Test 4 S6, um, and its results were fairly typical of the LiDAR robots. So as you're about to see, um, there's really not much on there. Maybe a few tiny hairline scratches from the caster wheel, some dust, and tread marks. Now the 360 S5 is up next, and again, its results were pretty much the same as most of the other LiDAR robots, because they all use the same um, type of brush design. I don't linger on the results of these things because there really isn't much to see. Um, we're starting to accumulate some more hairline scratches uh, and of course more dust. Now, none of these robots have been cleaned um, prior to this test. The, all of these robots are used uh, daily in my house, so these are very accurate conditions. Uh, and of course you expect the caster wheels and you know whatever else, the wheels themselves, um, to leave. They're very fine scratches. Uh, again, anything you do to your floor is going to scratch it. Even walking on it with bare feet if your feet are dirty. So more of the same here. The T8 AIVI was actually the scratchiest of all of the non-Roomba robots. Um, could be because of the way it navigated on the glass, you know, it made a lot of turns on the glass itself. It could also be because it's the robot that I use the most in my house, so um, it's probably dirtier than the others, which plays into it. Here you could see the uh, swirl marks that it left, um, and I wonder what, what that, what's actually causing that. Is it the caster wheel, perhaps? Maybe it's a little dirty? One of the weaknesses of that robot is the caster wheel is very hard to remove for cleaning. So we're going to do the Roombas now. And we're going to do the uh, the i7 on this side. It just completely devastates it. I mean, look at this. Here we have the rest of it, all the other robots. And then we have this. Okay. I could even see it from here. Wow. Look at that. Look at what it did.
So now that we know what it does, let's look at why. The first culprit is the um, suspended uh, brushes or extractor bars. They're, they're basically um, designed to make firm contact with the floor. And as you can see, the fins on the brushes are actually very short, so the body of the brush in some cases makes contact. The Nido D7, which is also D-shaped and has the brushes in the front, has little caster wheels uh, on the housing, which would keep it from making contact too firmly. Now, as you can see with a standard um, uh, LiDAR robot like this, Echovac C8 AIVI, it, um, the only thing that makes contact with the floor, really, are the bristles. The rubbery parts of the brush don't make contact, even with their uh, most extended position. Same thing with this Roborock. It's just the bristles, and bristles don't really scratch floors. The, um, you, the Roomba, on the other hand, this is the i7. You can see, um, I'm picking it up and putting it down. You can see as I do that, the, the brush moves, the one on the left. Um, that shows you that it makes uh, contact with the, with the floor and actually pushes up on the housing. And it, you can see I'm sliding it back and forth, and it's kind of like the friction is making the, the brush move. The um, S9 is actually worse. You can see the same thing. The, as soon as I put it down, the, um, the brush housing moves, which means that the, that brush is firmly in contact with the floor. And again, friction as I'm moving it back and forth. You can see it here from the front, the, the degree to which it, it raises up in the body or rather, or drops when I pick it up. So again, that contact is firm. It's not just barely touching the floor, it's, it's pressing into the floor. And the design of the brushes themselves is part of the problem, as I'll show you in a second. Now, every um, LiDAR robot that I've seen uses the same type of brush or extractor bar, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's a hybrid design, so it's got bristles and uh, rubbery fins. And as I showed you earlier, the, um, the bristles are the only thing that makes contact. And you can see there's not really any embedded dirt in the rubbery parts. Again, these brushes have not been cleaned at all in days. Um, now I'm going to take uh, the brushes from the i7. I'm going to show you how much dirt is embedded in the actual material of the brush. It's important to understand that it's this dirt that actually scratches your floor. Um, the brushes are a soft material and are incapable of scratching the floor when they're clean. But of course, it's a vacuum cleaner. So um, what's it going to do? It's going to accumulate dirt on the brushes. Now, I think this clip of it cleaning my bathroom is uh, appropriate since I'm pretty much ready to flush this thing down the toilet. So to summarize the problem, the issue is with the design of the brushes themselves, which have very short fins um, and are entirely made of this rubbery silicone or whatever the actual material is, and so they pick up dirt, which sticks to them, and the dirt is what scratches your floor. The other problem is, of course, the brush housing, which um, presses these brushes firmly into the floor, bringing all that dirt that it picks up into contact um, with the floor surface and causing scratches. I don't see how iRobot didn't realize that this would happen. I mean, I, I, as I said earlier, I was concerned with it from the moment that I noticed it. It's just kind of ridiculous how they could overlook something like this. So the real question is, what do you do? Um, well, you, you could do what I'm about to do, which is return both of them. Amazon extended the uh, holiday uh, return window to the end of January, so I'm going to take advantage of that. There's just no reason for me to have them, um, considering how many other robots I have and um, the fact that they don't scratch my floors, and these do. The other thing you could do, of course, is don't use them on hardwood floors, laminate, or uh, vinyl. Um, if you have carpets, it's obviously not going to scratch your carpet. And if you have ceramic floors, it's probably going to have a very hard time scratching those because of how hard they are. Of course, that also applies to stone floors and you know similar materials that are just too hard for it to scratch. So if you have those kinds of floors, this really doesn't affect you. But if it's too late to return it and you do have the type of floors that this affects, it's not the end of the world. Um, one thing you could do is keep the brushes clean. Every you know few cleaning runs, perhaps every other day, every two or three days, take the brushes out, wash them in the sink, get rid of all that embedded dirt. When I first got the i7, I tested it after you know it spent a day or so cleaning. And it didn't really noticeably scratch the plexiglass, so I was happy. I thought, wow, this is different. Yay, it's only the S9. Of course, um, once it had cleaned for a while and the brushes got some dirt on them, that, that changed. And, you know, as you saw in the test that I did, it significantly scratched the floor almost as badly as the S9 did. But the lesson here is keep those brushes clean. So incorporate this into your, um, you know, scheduled maintenance that you do with the robot. If you do that, then, you know, it's not so bad. It's just another pain in the butt thing that you have to do, you know, to keep the robot running. Now, I know with certainty, or reasonable certainty, that the i7 with clean brushes will not um, scratch your floors, but I can't say the same thing for the S9. I'm assuming the same is true, but I haven't actually tested it, um, so I can't uh, give you any sort of certainty that 
you know, routine maintenance will keep that thing um, from scratching your floors. Well, that's the end of the video, and I'm really sorry to be the bearer of bad news. If you're not too mad at me, please like and subscribe. Making these videos is time-consuming and difficult, and um, getting people to appreciate it is part of what motivates me. So thank you for watching, and until next time, I'm Mike, and this is Mr. Roombato, a channel named after Roombas, um, which will not have any Roombas pretty soon. So that's kind of awkward, but it is what it is.